This video is sponsored by Bityad, with over 400 cryptos to trade on their spot, perpetual coin futures, USDT futures, with leverage of 1x to up to 125x, you can trade foreign exchange, commodities like gold, silver and oil, and traditional markets like Nasdaq, all with some of the lowest fees available on any trading platform. You can use their copy trader to copy other traders with better performance than you, or you can become a copy trader yourself and earn a few extra percent from the people that follow you. Plus, it got 9 out of 10 stars from the Coin Bureau guy. Bityard! Hello everybody, welcome back. So uh, I'm going to make a few videos throughout the day, so I'm going to record them all this morning and then release them periodically throughout the day, because that's, that's what YouTubers are supposed to do. And uh, feel free to subscribe and put the notification bell on, because that's what YouTubers are supposed to say. I also have a Patreon, and we'll be doing a live stream tonight, so feel free to subscribe to that. That's what uh, I suppose Patreon people are supposed to say. Anyway, production value has always been uh, not the strong point of this channel. Um, but it's worth mentioning these things at the beginning. So let's have a think about Bitcoin. We'll only really focus on Bitcoin. So let's just go back in time to when we got that short signal on the Ichimoku cloud. So that was generated when this Chiku span closed outside of the outside of the cloud. And that would have been confirmed at this candle body open and close. And since then, it was close to a 50% drop. So that's more than I would have expected. I knew that the short signal had been played. I, you know, I was aware of it, uh, but I wouldn't have thought you know, 50% would have been the case. But obviously there's other things that have fed into that, like liquidations, miners having to sell, being forced to sell, stuff like that. I would have probably, you know, uh, thought that the 20, uh, sorry, the 200 weekly would have been the place to have held it. But as we started to approach that and we looked at traditional markets and then all these other things started floating around in the uh, in the public forums about Celsius and all this madness, um, the 20 weekly became a bit of a non-event really and we sliced right through it i made a video on that saying i think yeah it's a bit of a paper tiger it's going to be a non-event and we're through and we've cr uh, gone through it now now moving averages do count for certain things the longer the term time frames then i would suppose we need to see a couple of weeks two to three weeks being below it for it to really be considered to be a resistance we would expect it to be resistance at first pass and if that's the case we're talking twenty two thousand two hundred, give or take um we would expect that uh, but uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be the resistance that we focus on the most. If we talk about short-term time frames, we do need to go down to the short-term time frames. So at the moment, if we go down to the four hourly, we're approaching what I would consider to be the first level of rejection here, which is around 21,700 thereabouts, and it's a 50 exponential moving average. It's also the top of this Bollinger Band. Now we're working on some buy signals, but we're far away from getting them. We're not gonna, really gonna be getting any buy signals, not for a continuation of a trend that we can be comfortable in while we're down here because we've been aggressively sold off for such a long period of time these could just be considered to be dead cat bounces now, that's fine uh, and that's like i say tradable we can see that we've been able to trade a lot of this uh altcoin to bitcoins then back into bitcoin and, and maybe vice versa again and again and again but you know generally for uh well, for a, a gratifying trade where you can just buy and sit and hold and watch it go up every day like we used to do <laughs> it's not likely to be the case. I think it's most likely to stay and remain choppy for quite a while with probably over time, you know, towards the end of this year, uh, we will have likely, um, but not definitely, uh, found new lows. But for the moment, uh, this could bounce all the way up to the uh, to this kind of area over, over the next few weeks or so. So we're talking up to 28,000 maybe a little higher and this is effectively where we kind of in retrospect now looking at this they're uh, redistributed i suppose uh, redistributed uh, um but you know that is top target for the moment i wouldn't really hold out for that um you know we could get rejected from here and, and come down but given the way that it's looking and with my overall opinion on the traditional markets um uh, going again there's no guarantees here but my when I've boiled it all down, it looks as though the everything bounce is going to occur within the next couple of weeks. Uh, and that basically means all major indexes, like I said on those videos on on um, Thursday and Friday, I've bought into all major indexes here in the US market. I'm not going to be buying the FTSE. I'm not mad. Uh, but yeah, American markets is where, is where, it's, where the focus is. And, uh, and I think that we're going to start to see some major upside for those. But remember, it's, a de it's, it's the everything bounce, not the everything reversal. In the grand context, everything is still very much in a bear market. So we should expect it to continue to be in a bear market. And if you're thinking about Bitcoin as far as its cycle, which seems to be the most appropriate way to view this, uh, the four-year cycle model appears to be the most appropriate 
appropriate way to to view this whether uh, we had the the pop around here on volume the pop around here on market cap or the pop around here on price and um, the four-year market cycle would appear to be most appropriate when it comes to pop on price but we could have measured it from any of these and it would still be relatively i don't know appropriate to consider each one of these to be the top um depending on whether it's volume uh and market cap or uh, price but the market cycle the four-year market cycle would have ended around this area here and that would determine it to end uh, anywhere from september to around november so we still got a ways off so if you're looking to hold out on bitcoin and not buy into it and hope for some you know, i suppose instantly gratifying trades and uh, then you would probably probably feel most you know i suppose the, the best way would be to wait it out regardless of it going up even, even if it pumps 100 percent from here it doesn't really matter the, you know you you would want to hold out you know so if you are you know not into trading if you just want to buy and hold and invest the safest area would be to wait and towards the end of the year despite you know it might not make a new low but it would still be relatively safer to buy it and buy things around then generally speaking and that's what i did in the less in the last bear market so i rode it all the way up to the top mostly in xrp to be honest with you and it had it had some serious gains and then i sold it on the way down around uh, roughly around here and, and you know made basically close to 100x just on an xrp trade and it was a life-changing stuff and then I, I thought well i'm not you know i'm not too interested in getting in on this and i waited for the cycle low to end with a capitulation low and then i wanted to see signs of reversal and i bought just below four thousand uh, and that's how i played the last bear market i wasn't interested in going crazy i'd had a huge windfall and i went off and enjoyed the rest of my life you know for and, and until the time was right to get back in on this but even in a bull market, it's super choppy. It went all the way up to 14,000, all the way down to 6,600, all the way up to 10, all the way down to 4, all the way back up to 10, back up to uh, 12, and then it ended like this. But this area here is the best part of two years. And that's a bull market for you. And it was choppy as hell. Choppy as hell. Uh, and I was happy to hold for the most part uh, because I was confident in the cycle ending with a high. Yeah, I was thinking maybe a higher high than this, but uh, you know, altcoins obviously made a, made a big difference. But but yeah, all I'm trying to put across to you is that if you are holding off on the sidelines and you're checking Twitter all the time still anyway, uh, it, it might be your worst enemy really to to be. I suppose focusing on every last little piece of price action try and think about the cycle instead and uh, maybe re-enter the market between september and november if and when we get a lower low form and anything is going to anything could happen during that period but i do favor the everything bounce so let's just have a think about so we've we've had a look at the four hourly with that uh, uh, 50 exponential moving averages around here so that's your top of the bollinger bands and 50 exponential coming in around 21,700. that's a natural resistance and that would be one that i would say it would probably be a buy the dip opportunity so get rejection from there move back down towards 20,000 or so and then maybe get picked up the bigger ones would be reclaiming this uh, 10 exponential on the daily so that's 22,200 more or less again these are descending so they get lower every day uh, and then you've got your 20 uh, 21 exponential and your center of the bollinger band coming in around between 25 26 these are the longer term uh, targets and that's your overall target I suppose about 29,000 uh, and that 29,000 is not a non-event that 29,000 goes back in time if we were to stretch it all the way out whoa we won't do it like that we stretch it all the way out that's your summer lows and that's going to end up being a major resistance so there's a lot of resistance above us uh, as we all know on, on on all the time frames weeklies dailies four hourlies and whatever but i think the range likely to be played between now and, and when this everything bounce kicks in is still going to be looking to to revisit these potential lows and maybe go lower and this being our potential top uh, during this latter part of the bear market so we are we we, we sh seriously should consider the uh, the very realistic possibility that this does move up to around 28 29000 um you know within the next month or two uh, but we should also completely recognize that these are definitely on the on the table these 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 are realistic and although they might be uh, let's call them uh, not unlikely uh, areas for it to come down to between now and September, October, November when the cycle low is printed. So forget about what traditional markets are doing. I 
I, I like I say, I do think they're going to do an everything bounce. But I, you know, who who knows if they do this big crash that everybody's been touting for? They could do that. They could definitely do that. Um, but it would require a few other things to take place within, like housing markets and things like that. They would we would need a similar kind of. Uh, bearish um, capitulation type FUD situation like the housing market crash and that could happen let's face it housing market is pretty peaky in itself uh, but for the moment we're, we're mainly focused on inflation figures and that's what's causing this major bear market across all boards and so I am going to make a video on on this everything bounce again just to monitor where we are but the main thing to focus on is obviously the Dixie which is getting rejected coming down that's what I expected uh, oil uh, sorry uh, wheat which peaked over here massively peaked and is looking pretty droopy and bearish probably going to come down so that's your food prices and oil currently trying to reclaim the 100 ten dollar uh, zone and if that were to be reclaimed then the everything bounce will be put on hold put on freeze we do really need oil to stay below 110 i would say and start to creep its way down whether it's below 100 or arguably towards around 75 which is where i think the the, the oil range is going to remain between 75 and maybe 120 dollars for a barrel of oil so again, I, I, I'm, I'm all up for the everything bounce, but these are the charts that we'll need to monitor, and I'll make a video on that later. Anyway, that'll do for Bitcoin. Like I say, I won't get too excited, although it is relatively encouraging on the short-term time frames that we do start to incrementally start to... Uh, to reclaim some of these moving averages basically being supports and i think that the top of this bounce even if it is the everything bounce is going to be the 28 to 29,000. and if we think about what that actually is from the bottom to the top it's a 63 percent 64 percent move that's not bad we can obviously go higher we could obviously get rejected lower it's very early days at the moment and we do need traditional markets to to uh, to start to move in the right direction which i think that they will uh, but we're looking at oil effectively because we just want to front run the CPI data. That's as simple as that, really. Um, but I'm in favor of that. Like I can say I bought into NASDAQ, Dow Jones, Industrial Average, S&P and a few stocks all on Friday because I am anticipating maybe a small pullback to the tune of 5, 3, 2% on those major indexes uh, before it does a bounce. So I'm, I'm okay to allow that to happen um, because the risk to reward from what I see is is likely to occur quite good so we're talking maybe a potential pullback of up to five percent uh, with a gain of you know up to about 35 percent so that's good risk to reward and again I'm not using leverage simply buying stocks buying stocks uh, and buying shares right so I'm gonna leave with you there uh, like I say subscribe notification bell like share it with your granny and I hope you have a nice day take it easy